I'm going to talk about uh, little miniature birdhouse or birdhouse ornaments or whatever you want to call them. Um, looking, just looking at these three here in the, in the center, these three right here, can you tell any difference in those other, other than maybe slight differences in, in shape and, and color of the wood and various things? Can you see any differences in those three ornaments? The correct answer is no. The difference being is in the weight. So I'm going to try to show you all three different techniques today, time permitting. Um, this one is, uh, is the easiest, which I call version number one. And there's no hollowing involved, no hollowing and no reverse turning involved. <coughs> and so that, that one weighs about an ounce. This one has minimal hollowing. This one weighs about eight tenths of an ounce. And it has hollowing just done with a Forstner bit. Just to remove a bit of weight and also provide for reverse chucking. And that one, that one, let's say that one's eight tenths of an ounce. This one has the most hollowing, and this, this one weighs a half an ounce. It has, has more extensive hollowing on it. Do you use a drill to do that too? Or do you Start out with a drill, and then, then use a tool to hollow some more. The lid on that one's a little bit loose. So we're going to talk about three different techniques of making what looks to be the same kind of ornament. The, uh, the fur, what I call number one, I can't draw left-handed, so can you see if I draw up here? Number one, is, is the block is solid. I put a tenon on, on, the, uh, on here and, and use, drill, use the Forstner bit to drill that in there. So there's no hollowing involved other than doing that little bit of drilling with the, uh, with the Forstner bit. The drawback to this is it, it, it weighs twice as much as one that's hollowed. And also the way, because the orientation, I don't really care about this, this finish up here so I can part it off there and not have to worry about that finish, but I want to have a nice finish down here. So I'm going to mount it on the lathe with this toward the headstock. The drawback is when I go to side, this is going to be drilled with a three quarter inch forcer bit. You have to be very, very accurate in making that tenon if you want it to fit, because once you, once you part it off, there's no going back to fix it, other, other than maybe making this a little bit larger here. Okay, then number two, come in with a, uh, a three-quarter inch Forstner bit and, and, and bore down in there. So I'm going to, I'm going to mount it in the, in the lathe with this toward the headstock and I'm going to be able to bore this out and, 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 and treat the, uh, the upper surface of that and then this will be mounted in the, in, the, in the lathe with this toward the headstock. I'll come in and I'll bore in with a 5 8 inch bit and then create a mortise here or a tenon here that's going to fit into this mortise. And the advantage to that is it's a weight's reduced slightly, but it gives me the capability of reverse chucking it to, 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 uh, to uh, finish off the other end. And then if you need to touch it up, you can always put it back in, 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 and reverse chuck it again. You don't destroy any of the chucking. And number three, I'll try to draw it this way. Oh, and this, is, this has got a, a quarter inch hole drilled in for the uh, for the finial. Same way down here. This one I start out with a with a three quarter inch bit and go down about uh, I think seven eighths of an inch. I didn't get that centered very well. And then I then I come in farther with a five eighths. And that's a quarter inch there. And then the top is uh, I, I create a create an eighth inch deep tenon on it. And and uh, and these these the 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 the, the roof the bottom of the roof is just cut straight across. I, I do recess it slightly, so that when uh, re this recess just ever so slightly, so this gap you don't see a gap if, if you don't get a real good fit between here and here you don't see a gap. If this is recessed a bit, this is fitting up in in there and it doesn't uh, you don't see the gap. But with this one, I do more dramatic reducing of. of of material and then once I get that once I get that done then I come in and, and, and do some do, do some additional hollowing in here like that to reduce more like no more weight 
And then, of course, you got the finial down there. So those are the three different techniques. This is going to be number one, number two, and number three. Okay, I've already started out my, with my blocks uh, rounded. Does anybody need to have any questions on how I get from here? How I get from here to here? Anybody need to see that? Okay. that up again and didn't, didn't get it seated quite right. Refer to the notes here, make sure I don't lose a, forget a step. Okay, I'm going to uh, reduce that diameter down to about my, my ultimate, the, the roof on all these, the, the larger diameter of the roof is about two, about uh, uh, one and three quarters inches, and the largest diameter on the body is, is an inch and a half. So I'll reduce this down to uh, reduce this down to about, um, I'll, I'll go th I'll take this one down since I'm not going to reverse chuck this and I'm going to take it down to exactly to an inch and a half. If uh, my head gets in the way, just let me know. Again, I'm, I'm using a, a bowl gouge, or, or I'm using a deep fluted gouge it's often referred to as a bowl gouge instead of a instead of a spindle roughing gouge that most people many people use I, I, I've just grown grown fond of just using a bowl gouge to, to reduce the material down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use the I'm going to make a shearing cut up here on, on the on the on the side of the flute Up to about 1800. Mm -hmm. uh, about inch and, a, inch and three quarters. Inch and a half. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is, is uh, true up the bottom or the face. That's going to be my finished surface. I need to undercut that slightly. Now 
That way when the body goes up against there, you won't see a, if, if it's not a perfect fit there, won't be, the gap won't show. Oh, that was a skew. Okay, I treat up the face. I marked the, I've already got the center marked, so I don't need to do that step. I didn't. I, I could have done the face all the way down there and had to reestablish the center, but I'm just going to leave the center there because the, the bit's going to get rid of it anyway. So now I'm going to. Uh, oh, and no, I, I, I'm uh, getting my my body's confused. I need. I do need. I, I need to clean that up so that there's no. Uh, yeah, that needs to be cleaned up. I'm sorry because I'm not drilling all, I'm not drilling the, from this end. That's why I wrote the steps down so I wouldn't get, uh, get myself confused. So you're starting working on this? This is the bottom. bottom. This is the bottom of the, of the body. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shape the bottom of the body and I'm going to make the tenon up here. So I, I need to have a clean, clean bottom down there with, with, uh, with just a, a small hole for the uh, quarter inch bit. And this doesn't, it's, it's the other, other end that needs to be recessed. So let's, Hopefully I've got, I've got more than enough material there. But yeah, so let me, let me do this over again and get it, uh, get that cleaned up down there. Okay, so now I need to mark the, mark the bottom. And I'm just going to use the tip of the skew to go to mark that, make a little little dimple there. Now I'm going to drill the, uh, the quarter inch hole for the finial. It's so going to run that about 400 RPMs. I got a got a quarter inch uh, brad point bit, and since there's 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 a bit of slop in here, and the reason I marked that didn't mark the center in there, I find the center, and then I push this up and let the uh, let it find the center. Then you just need to bore in, you know, three eighths or a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now I need to mark the uh, the body. Like I say, the body is the, on the widest diameter is is an inch and a half. And on, on this ornament here, and well, I should have said that too, the ornaments, this, this, this ornament over here is based on Dick Singh's, the, the, the style of what he does. Dick Singh's book is, is the style of, is, is the, the, basically the dimensions and stuff that on, on this number three is, is the dimensions that Dick Singh uses in, in his book. And what I'm doing is, is the, uh, the first chapter, and I'm showing you how he did it on that. Uh, the book's got a lot more stuff in than what I'm going to show you, so I recommend the book. The book is an exorbitant uh, 1495, so it's not going to break the bank. And then this one is a, a Dale niche. It's got uh, different contributors for different styles of, uh, of ornaments. It gives you a lot more, more variations in, in shape. And I think they got that book out here. I think I got this book down at Highland. Okay, so the, uh, the, this, this, the, this, the dimension on the body is an inch and a half uh, di at the widest diameter and an inch and a half uh, from top to bottom. So I'm going to, since this one is not recessed up like that, when I'm, uh, my tenon is an eighth of an inch long, so I'm going to reduce, uh, uh, I'm going to subtract an eighth of an inch so the, over the overall size of my top of my body is going to be right here. And the mid part of the body is going to be three quarters of an inch up from from there that's going to be the midpoint of the body so that should give me the same basic shape of, of the one that's got the hollowing in the, in the uh, so that's going to be my widest part and this is going to be where my three quarters tenon starts now I'm, I'm using this this fin this uh, live center here I like this one because it has you can take it has different replaceable tips you can put in here um, but this, this live center here will do the same thing. This is the live center that comes with many of the uh, mini lays. And what I did was I knocked the point out. The point that comes with the, with the lay, this is, it's tapered. I, I just put it on support the bearing and knock it out with a, uh, 
with a pin punch. And then I, I, I cut a taper on this wooden block and, and pressed it in there and then cut a quarter inch uh, tenon on the end of it. So I, you could do the same thing with the, with the life center that you get with your, with your mini lathe. I'm always going to provide tail stalk support whenever I can. Can you hear me now? I'm just going to start the tenon in here, just to give me a reference to when I want to start uh, start shaping the body. In fact, since I've since I've got it. Uh, supported I can go ahead and, and do the three quarter inch tenon. Like I say when, when you you don't have any with the other other methods I've got here I've always got the matching piece available that I can fit on there and make sure it's going to fit. With this one you don't have the capability so you've got to be pretty accurate in making that tenon if you want it to have a nice snug fit. So I'm going to go to a caliper that's, that gives me down to ten down to uh, hundred thousand ten thousands no hundred point zero zero one. One thousands. Okay, and I've got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just under an inch. So I need to go a little bit farther. Okay, I'm uh, 0.85. Okay, there's 0.8 exactly, so I'm going to need to go another... Not tenth, five hundred, five hundredths of an inch. <coughs> okay, point, point seven seven. Okay, there's, there's just over about the two thousandths over uh, three quarters of an inch, which, which should give me you know, a nice snug fit. If I take it all the way down to, uh, to, to, th to actually three quarters, then it might be a loose fit for the, with the forged rate going in. So that's just a ten, you know, point zero zero two over inch and, inch and uh, or three quarters of an inch. Okay, so now I just need to shape it. Now here I'm going to, and I, I didn't miss a step, before I drilled that hole, I want to describe a half inch circle with a compass. Well, I, since I've got, since I can't put the compass in there anymore, I can just mark it. I want half inch. What I do is I didn't draw it on there, but I put a little bit of a flat with a recessed on it. So when you put the finial in again, I didn't want a complete flat surface there. Otherwise, you see a gap around the finial if it didn't fit right. So I'm going to recess it slightly, and the finials recessed slightly. So then they should just touch on the on the uh, on the rim of that half inch circle. So I need to recess that slightly. Okay, so now I can shape it down. I need to round, the, for this being the wide spot, I round it over to that edge of that circle. And I'm going to round this one over. I want to leave about an eighth of an inch shoulder up here on, on, the, uh, on, on the, the top side. 
in my drawings not really, I didn't really taper it in my drawings not right, I didn't taper it in, I want to end up with about an eighth of an inch shoulder here. This should be tapered in like that. So I've got an eighth of an inch shoulder here. Do, I do the what? The birdhouse entry. Hole. When I get it shaped. And the reason I do that, the one thing that, that that's, I, I vary from Dick Singh's d d directions is Dick Singh drills this entry hole at this point. Well, I like to, to go ahead and get it shaped and see the tech, because you can't really tell the grain what the grain's going to look like. I like to put the entry hole. Looking, looking at the, the grain pattern, I like to put the entry hole so it's sort of that, that grain pattern sort of frames the, uh, the entry hole. Is that just a flat or a, uh, just a quarter inch pin on the end of Well, it, it's got a, it's, it's a pin and a cup. They, they do have, they do have one of the, one of the uh, accessories that's just a flat tip on the end. This, this one's got a, a fixed, fixed pin and a cup. Which which one is that? Which brand of uh, live is It's from Craft Supply. If you go on if you go on their web page, when I I've had this for about four four years or so, all they, this is made by Precision Engineering, U.S. made, um, and since then they now have a Chinese version. That's about half the price, but I'd rather pay for myself. I'd personally rather pay for the U.S. version. But that's what this is the U.S. version here. But it's in Craft Supply, and it ha just happens to be. It's the life center that Dick, in his picture here, that's the life center he's using in there too. And he say you're never supposed to move the, uh, the, the, the uh, Tool rest when this lathe is spinning. Well, when you got a big bowl that's got all sorts of lumps and bumps on it, yeah, you don't want to be moving the tool rest when you got it, got it spinning. But everything's round on here. Even if I do touch it, it's not going to do anything. It's it's round. So it's 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 something in, you should get in the practice of doing, but it's not always really necessary. Okay, so I'm just going to round it over to that half inch area from here, just make a nice, nice smooth surface. Oh, and I'm using a spindle gouge now. I switched from these, you've got the same handle, but this is a spindle gouge, or a shallow fluted gouge that's referred to as a spindle gouge. Whereas opposed to the, to the deep fluted gouge that's referred to as a bowl gouge. You can see it there. I'm just looking for a nice, nice curvature there. I've got a little bit of flat there, so let me just take it down a little bit more right here. That's better. So I'm just looking for a nice, a nice curvature there. Okay, now here I'm just going to take it down now to leave about a quarter of an inch or, or an eighth of an inch uh, tendon on the or shoulder on the top. That's good there. Okay, now again, I need to undercut that slightly so that I don't have a complete flat surface there. And I'm just using a small skew for this. Okay, that's it for the body. Now you would, at this point, if you wanted to do any sanding and finishing on it, this is the time you would do it. 
This is why you got it on here, if you want to do it under power with the lathe. Uh, you could, with, with this, when it, normally sanding, it does, the sanding would remove that pencil line. So now I've got that, that's it for the body, and now all I do is just part it off. I've got a, a narrow parting tool, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm not going to go all the way, I'm just going to go down to about oh, an eighth of an inch or so and then cut it off with a saw. And since it's supported, I've got, since I've got that, that quarter inch tenon, you know, quarter inch written in there, even once I get it parted off, it's not going to go flopping around, it's going to, it's going to stay on the live center. Okay, I got it down about an eighth of an inch. Okay, there's the body. Okay, now the, the roof I'm going to take down to, uh, to to one and three quarter inches. Yeah, one and three quarter for the roof. And I'm taking it down to the exact, exact dimensions here because I can't reverse chuck it. On the pieces that I re reverse chuck, I make it about a sixteenth of an inch oversized because always when you reverse chuck it, it doesn't run perfectly true. So you leave a little bit of leeway there that I can take it down to the final <coughs> dimension once I get it reversed. Okay, go back to my uh, bowl gouge. Okay, and 13 sixteenths. And three quarters. Okay, so next I wanted to uh, reduce the diameter and now true up the true up the face. Now here's where I, I, I can, since, since it's going to be boring in, I can leave this in there and I only need to chew down to within um, three quarters of an inch because that's the size of diameter I'm tenon I'm going to put, be putting on it. And again, I want to undercut that slightly. I want to bore a, a three-quarter inch hole about five-sixteenths of an inch deep. And I'm using the, uh, not really needed for, for this operation here, but you know, they are, I think they're a little bit more accurately uh, milled than the cheaper ones. These are the uh, Precision shear, the Freud precision shear, the uh, Forzner bits that are available out here. And for this, I'm going to run about 400 RPM. And I just need to go in deeper than what the tenon is on there, and I think the tenon's probably about maybe three eighths of the most, so I'll just go in the, the, to the depth of this Forzner bit. Okay, that's it for the bottom. So now I want to support that. I could use uh, 
this live center here, or I could use my, um, my I've got a, a, just got a quarter inch diameter tenon on there, I could use either one of those to support that. Okay, now my, the height of my roof is two inches. So I'll just uh, part down in there a little bit just to mark that. Okay, I'm going to, going to start shaping my roof now. I want to go down to about a quarter of an inch at the tip. Okay, I'm over. Switch over to the spindle gouge. Is like to, to make the handle, the, the knob, I don't, I never lock this down. If you notice a while ago it was over on this side and was vibrating, it wants to loosen itself up, but if you always put the handle over there on that side, then it's not going to, uh, if, if it tries to fall down, it's going to t tighten it more. Okay, reset my, reestablish my overall height. Just a little bit of roughness there on the edge where I didn't have my initial surface that clean, so I'll go up and, now you can do this with sandpaper, I didn't bring any sandpaper with me today, so I'll just, just touch that up slightly with that. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so I should have, that should be about a quarter of an inch down there now. Yeah. So I want to come down, I, I like to have, the, the instead of just going up straight quarter inch, I like to taper a little bit to give a little bit of thinner area there, so I come down about a third, and I'll go take that down to about three sixteenths. So there's my top. And a third of, uh, of, of two inches is about 17 millimeters. So I'll make the center about right there, the narrow spot right there.
and I'm just looking for a nice, nice pleasing curve. I got a little bit of a, little bit of a hump right. It's got a nice curve there, and then there's just a little bit of a hump right in there. A little bit of a ridge right there. And this is just a little homemade skew from a piece of uh, quarter inch high speed steel. Feels pretty good. Okay, so we're done with that. We're going to part it off. Now, one of the, the upper surface, I like to make a little bit dome, so I'm just going to go down and start the dome and, uh, and then finish it with a saw. That's it for the roof. Now I would come back and I would, uh, you know, touch that up with some sandpaper and then have then then mark and drill a hole for the uh, for the ice screw. And that's it for no, that's it for number one. No hollowing involved. Yeah, no special tools. Um, close on that. You always want to take that out of there before you, because uh, that point of there make a nice divot. I just, this, what oh, did show, it did make a mark. <laughs>